Hello, welcome to the Lily Loves Crochet Podcast episode 36. My name is Emma and this is my podcast all about crochet and crafts and books and all the other things I like to talk about. I hope you're all well and um, you're doing it okay. We're in another lockdown here in the UK, I suspect most places are. Um, and we're coping, <laughs> let's just say that. So the younger two are both home learning, homeschooling, and um, the teachers are doing such an amazing job. They've got um, live lessons mixed with, um, you know, uh, homework, I suppose. So at the moment, they're both doing it in their bedrooms. So if you can hear chatter and that in the background, that's why I can't I can't do anything about that really. And um, by three o'clock, by the time they finished, it's too late for me to film. So. I think I've got about an hour before they break for lunch so I thought I would try and film a podcast and to be honest with you I nearly didn't because because the children are home everything seems to take that much longer and um, I haven't moved on much with my projects but I did manage to finish the beret pattern that um, if you've been watching the podcast for a long time I think I made these last Christmas or the Christmas before and I promised the pattern and it never got wrote up um, and the reason for that was I was working with um, some velvet yarn that got discontinued <laughs> by the time I got round so last year I found a substitute which was this Bernat velvet yarn this one is actually the baby Bernat baby velvet yarn um, and I made my berry up in this now this um, I continue to use the um, the six millimeter hook which the last velvet yarn I was using was actually a chunky weight and this is classified as an Aran however I would say that it is thicker than an Aran it's just not a chunky weight yarn so I was then a bit concerned about releasing the pattern because I thought you're going to find it quite hard to match the yarn if you don't want to use the the velvet so I thought I would go to chunky because that is what I had made the hats up previously and I continued with the six millimeter I bought some gorgeous yarn from Wool and the Gang I don't have an unopened um skein up here I don't think and you all also have to excuse me that my tummy is rumbling <laughs> I've yet to have breakfast so um this does use this beret I love it I absolutely adore it it's um I guess it's a traditional style beret and that you have the flat circle and then you have the decreases but the only thing I've done is just add some plain rows of single crochet there can you see it just gives it a bit more of a brim because a traditional berry really will just perch on your head and um I want something that actually is going to keep me warm when I'm walking the dog so um so it has got a bit of a lip you could leave that off you know it's up to you really I've written the pattern up this is for an adult size beret I have written the pattern up with instructions on how to for example if you are to use a different um weight yarn and the six millimeter hook. I mean, obviously, if you use a six millimeter with this velvet, you're going to get a very lovely drapey soft hat. You can just see, can't you? If you use it with the chunky yarn, you're just going to get a more structured beret. I actually, I like both for different reasons. I love the structure of this. I love that it gives that traditional beret shape. However, this one's really nice if you want to wear it sort of, I'm not going to put it on today, so I've got my hair up, but if you want to wear a more slouchy beanie, something that's hanging down a bit more. So, um, but there is there are some instructions to, um, you can miss out a row here, and then I've told you where to restart the decreases. So um, if you are using a slightly um, chunkier yarn, you can do that if you're not getting gauge. You could also, if you are m making that up in a thinner um, weight yarn, you can just carry on making this circle bit bigger and, the pattern is very simple and it and it's um you know it's really just a basic circle so all you're doing is just increasing the increases and alternating the rows of bubbles so there's always six bubbles per um or popcorn stitches per round um and the pdf i created a pdf that you can print there is a small charge for that because i did include a 
chart, which takes a bit more time. So the free pattern is up on the blog. That does not include the chart, um, but the free written pattern and there's some photos on the blog. If you want to buy the PDF, that does come with the, um, the chart. And you can see quite easily how you could extend this circle. So um, it's quite easy to adapt. I think that's what I'm saying, but I didn't want to write it up in lots of different sizes just because of the yarn situation really. So I would say it's a pattern for a chunky weight yarn, preferably. However, if you do have this um, Bernat Velvet, um, the normal Bernat Velvet comes in a 300 gram ball and it is, I think it might be a chunky weight yarn, but the Baby Velvet, which is the one that I had bought, is classified as an Aran weight yarn. But saying that, I did, when I was working them up, I did get gauge using my six millimeter hook with both the yarns. So this is the Bernat Baby Velvet here. And this is the Wool and the Gang. It's the Al Pacino Merino. So, and they're both coming up exactly the same size. So make of that what you will, but there is a definite difference in well, actually there's not really. I mean, I feel like it's more, there we go. So I'm recommending a chunky yarn if you want to get that the best fit for that hat, unless you're using this um, velvet yarn. So that's up on the blog. Um, like I said, there's a PDF that you can buy. Um, it's inexpensive, but it does include a chart. Um, so yeah, I've had a really, uh, I'll put some pictures up of the girls actually because um, I did a photo shoot. So the pictures are all of my eldest when she was still at home. She very kindly cracked out one frosty morning <laughs> to help me. And I was just going to take some pictures of myself, but I thought while she's here, I'm going to um, grab her. And then um, Lulu wanted to come with us, but she just ran out of her bedroom <laughs> really early in the morning. Said, Can I come? <laughs> So we waited for her and I got some lovely shots of the girls together, which I haven't included in the blog, obviously, because she's um, well, she's quite young, really. But um, I'll put some up here for you to see because they are just lovely. Anyway, that's that. So I am so happy to finally have that one off my list and in the first month of the year as well. So I do have a lot of projects. There's the, um, the Vega cushion and the... Um, jumper as well that's an old one it's like the Betsy sweater um so I'll probably pick one of those to work on next I think maybe the um the jumper top actually because I quite like that one so um yes that's exciting so I did manage to get that lap done it did take a lot longer to get that pattern written up because I only have access to my laptop from homeschooling finishes <laughs> so and I'm still going out to work the libraries are still open for um essential um for computer use essential computer use and um uh, an order and collect service so i am popping out twice a week to to do that which i'm quite grateful for to be honest with you it does give me a chance to get out but um means i'm not quite getting as much done um, what else? So I'll show you the, I'm not sure if I, did I show this on the last podcast? I think maybe I did. I was talking about my um, mini blanket. I know I definitely showed it on one of the vlogs, vlogmases. So I really thought that I would move quite on quite far with this over Christmas, but with everyone home, I don't know. I just, I didn't crochet as much as I thought, to be honest with you. And I think once January hit and we got the news of the lockdown, we were all just a bit uh, disappointed. So I think my mood has not been quite there, but um, it has moved on. Got a good corner going on there. So I'm sort of joining as I go and, and trying to just mix up the colors as I go along really. There's no plan, no, um, but I did receive some beautiful minis from my lovely friend Claire of Mr and Mrs Rabbit Yarns and I need to add some of those in as well so um, actually I think they were pre-wound so I don't need to worry about them and I know that um, 
the Christmas yarns I bought from Dandelion and Dogwood. I haven't wound all of those into um, skeins yet. I don't know. I don't think I've got any of them in here yet. I don't think so. So I need to do that. No, I don't think so. So yes, I need um, to wind a couple more on that. So I want to do that because obviously I don't want to end up with lots of from the same um, set in one part of the blanket. Um, but I'm not going to, I don't think I'll buy many more skeins. I'll see how big it gets. I'm, I'm thinking maybe just a sort of a lap through. I don't know because it is so pretty. I mean, it would be really nice on the bed, but I mean, that would be a lot, a lot of squares, wouldn't it, for a king size bed? So maybe, maybe I could do it. Um, I think maybe I'll just do a throw. Let's be honest, I'm never going to uh, finish a <laughs> double size bed, let alone a king size. <laughs> So um, I'm still working on that um, and I just joining in a couple of squares when I feel like it. So I feel like that's probably, I'm not going to have a lot to, of progress to show you regularly with that one. I'll just keep working away at it and enjoying it. Um, I think I was very optimistic to think I could have that finished by the end of the year. <laughs> mm. And then, what time are we on? And then the only other project I've got is, I did tell you I was working up a um, neutral version of my teapot cosy. So here's my um, teapot cosy from my book, Romantic Crochet. And I love it. I love the colours. And I did see a really beautiful one made by Heather on, um, gosh, I think it's Hook One Pearl one on um, Instagram, I'll pop a picture here. She did it for the book tour and it was all in rainbow colours. It was beautiful. Um, however, I had already started a neutral one for myself because I thought that that would be just really nice in, in a, a neutral colour, in one solid colour. So I have been making one up and I did start it and I had, what I had done was just the two panels. So this is the basis. The foundation of the teapot cosy. So very, very simple. And then you're just adding um, onto uh, the front and back loops. Anyway, here, the bit that takes the time are the ruffles. So there we go. So I've started on the ruffles. This yarn, I think, is either a um, paint box or a style craft. It's sort of, I think the shade might even be pebble or stone. I'll have a look. Anyway, we were watching um, Bridgerton and I got the idea that I would like to actually add some sparkle to it. <laughs> so I'm going to have to unpick this top row of ruffles because what I've been doing is adding, I've got it in here, adding some sparkle yarn to the ruffles. And it is this, I've, I've used this many times. I think this is like an Ito sparkle thread it's really really tiny it's in a lovely kind of champagne really non-offensive color so it doesn't give it doesn't throw to gold or um it's just a lovely lovely neutral and because it's so fine it doesn't add any weight to your project so i'm using that and i hope i've got enough left to um to do the second one and i don't know if you can see the sparkle this is how subtle it is even coming up it's it's subtle, but it it, it is that. <laughs> I promise you, it's that. It just adds a really pretty touch, I think, and you don't even really notice it until the light just shines on it. Um, I don't think oh, I've got a hair there. That's one of mine. I don't think you'll even see it, but it is. It just gives it just a lovely. Oh so pretty that's what I've been doing so I've just been doing a few ruffles so I'm going to finish that side and then ruffle the other side and then I will have myself a lovely teapot cozy and that is a whip that had been started again before Christmas so I'll be happy to um to to do that and get that finished and crossed off so those are the only projects I'm working on now because I've like I said I've only just finished with the hat design um, so I'm working on my blankets and the little teapot cosy. So I'm looking at really want to start something new. I want to make more of other people's patterns this year if I can. Um, I, I know that I got sent a shawl pattern a little while ago and it was added to my Ravelry library. And I know that I've got patterns in there that I've bought that I've 
bought and I'm just not done anything with. So I'm not sure whether I'll try one of those next or whether I'll make something from one of the books, many, many books that I've got. I'm just gonna take a bit of time to think about that while I finish these. So that's it for crochet chat, really. Um, and then what else have I got to show you? I've got a few new bits. Let's have a look. No, no new yarn. I'm not, I mean, we're only in the first week of January. <laughs> Let's not get too excited. I didn't buy any yarn, but I did pop this into my shopping trolley when I was out doing my supermarket shop. It's the, I think it's the latest co um, this year, I'm assuming it is, of Inside, uh, Simply Crochet, sorry. This is 106 and really I bought it because the cover just sucked me in. I mean, first of all, it's pink, but second of all, look at this lovely scarf. I love that. And then this. Now, I feel like I may already have this pattern in a crochet book. <laughs> I will have to investigate that further. So I picked it up because my, I think if there are more than two patterns in a magazine that I want to make, then I think it's good value. So, but when I opened it, there was also this, look at this lovely little seal pup. I absolutely adore that. Um, I don't have anyone to make that for really, but, and then this skirt, a crochet skirt. I mean, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't wear a crochet skirt. Probably, but I do like the look of it a lot. Um, and then, as I was flicking through, that this and this one is by Fran Morgan, and it's just a really long, sort of one of those um, cotagons, like a cardigan. I don't know if you can see it to the light. Anyway, it's really lovely. However, and it looks really simple, but I just can't see myself making it because. It's very big and um, I don't know, I really want to. I'm really torn about that. Anyway, so there's some lovely, lovely patterns in this episode, um, episode issue, sorry. So I loved that. I love the seal part um, and the skirt, but mostly I, I love this. I just, I love this scarf. And I think it's the colours of that yarn with the black. It looks like it's maybe um, some sort of yarn cake because the colour is sort of the colours are changing. Let me have a look. It's um, Rico Creative Chic Unique Cake, seventy-five percent acrylic, fifteen percent wool. Two cakes of yarn A in candy and then a basic acrylic chunky in black cream. Oh, and then there's another type of wool. So it does use quite a bit of wool. And it, it looks like it's using double trebles as well. So I should imagine that would be quite quick to make up. I might have a go at that. I might see if I can get the yarn and have a go at that because I just love it. I, I really like it. Ugh. Anyway, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> so that's that and then and lastly I've just got some books to um, talk about so um, now I bought this one home from the library when I was at work last because it's only just come in and it, it must be new um, it's called craft your own happy and it's by Becky May Ford just looks like a really lovely book um, it says, a collection of 25 creative projects to craft your way to mindfulness. Now, I think we all need a bit of that. And I think it's interesting um, using um, crafting and crochet for mindfulness because some people's idea of that is relaxation and you just want a very repetitive pattern. But actually, um, she talks in this book about a state of, I think, is it free flow or... Um, a state of flow and that's when you're so engaged in um, an activity there we are it's called the, the state of concentration otherwise known as flow state it's when you are really engaged so engaged in a project that you are not letting any other thoughts penetrate your mind and that's 
you know, for me, if I'm too worried or anxious, I can't do anything too engaging. But if you're, you know, when you're sort of just worrying or over worrying or, you know, that's the sort of project that will just take your mind. That's the sort of thing, you know, crochet, a, a more intricate crochet pattern where you've just got to give it 100% of your concentration and you're not getting any of those intrusive thoughts. So this is what the, this book is aimed at. And um, I know it to be true because, um, you know, I do find it myself, but my eldest daughter, I bought her, um, for her birthday last year, I bought her an embroidery kit. It's a very simple um, kind of feminist piece of embroidery. And um, she's, you know, quite new to embroidery. So it was just like, almost like an outline with some wording. And um, over the summer, she was she was worrying, you know, about the, what was going to happen with the um, the virus and going back to university. And I did say to her, why don't you, have you started your embroidery? She said, well, I'd started, but I put it down. I said, why don't you just, you know, make time to do sort of half an hour or an hour a night? And she worked on it, and after every every time she worked on it, she she would say, actually, I, I yeah, I just feel so much better. Like my mind has been, you know, sort of free of those worries for a while. So I do think this type of book, and the nice thing about this book, I've had a good look through it, is I think there are lots of projects you could do with children. Um, there are some simple ones such as, um, you know, painting on stones, but then there are some more complicated ones like embroidery projects. Um, so I think that's nice. Just a, a relaxing cross stitch. Nothing is too complicated, but it's detailed enough, I think, for you to achieve that state of flow where you're not being subjected to your mind. <laughs> Um, but even things like, um, there's a lovely little um, a clay ring dish there, I really love that, so simple, I could do that with Lulu, um, you know, and then those are the painted stones, we've seen lots of these about, but the book is lovely, the photography is lovely, um, there are lots of different crafts, like I said there's several resin crafts in here that I was quite interested in. and then there's some just really simple um, crafts, I mean I won't show them all because I didn't want to spoil it but even things like this, a pom-pom footstool, just a minute I'm just going to stop the camera, there we go, um, yes the pom-pom footstool, uh, I mean it's obviously all on an existing, she's just sewn them onto an existing um, so the pom pom making itself is a great thing to do with children. Um, let's see what else. There's some um, felt felt crafts. Oh, and these. Uh, Lulu made me some of these. They're little origami stars, and she's put them into a little jar. She made some, just made loads and put them into a little wishing jar. Absolutely adore that idea. Um, you know, uh, just think that's lovely. And the instructions look nice and clear. There's lots of um, photos. So I think if you are after a new all round craft book that with some projects you can do, you know, with or without children, um, there's one in particular that I loved. Oh, here. I love this um, this banner. You are enough. The reason I love it is because it's all made with felt <laughs> and um, you just can't go wrong really with felt, can you? So I thought I'd mention that. Like I said, this one had just come into our local library. So um, I'm not sure um, how how much it would be on, on somewhere like Amazon, but it might be worth checking your library out. So there's that. And then the last um, couple of things I bought are some new year new me stationery <laughs> that's not like that at all actually <laughs> new year save me um my diary i'm gonna give a little shout out to my diary just says my 2021 diary and then you can get these ones personalized so i've just got my name and my business name there and um these diaries are from papier you can get these all, they do lots of different designs and you can get them all personalised. Um, so for example, you can change the text here, you can change the text here, here. You can have them in different colours. They've got loads of different designs, some really, really pretty designs. If I can find a screenshot, I'll put some pictures up. What I love about this journal in particular is this. I'll try and find something that I haven't written in. 
at the beginning, you've got month to view. So just at the beginning, it goes through every month like this. So you can put in all your birthdays and any important dates. And then there's a little column there, it says, um, it's not showing yet, to see and do, I love that. Um, so it's almost like a quick reference. Um, and then, and then it's just a week to view. So you've got plenty of space for writing tasks and whatnot. Um, but before every month, you've also got this. So you've got a page for notes and then you've got this page. So you've got there a to-do list, monthly goals. Um, what else is there? Wish list and important dates. I love that because in my, I don't know if it's the last of the, it was the last video I did with Skillshare. I was talking about working towards some smaller goals. So for me, just to write down a few goals for that month is just really lovely that I can look back. Um, so I'm really, really impressed. I've never bought a diary from them before, but I did see them on Instagram. Um, the brand is, is papier.com. Um, and when I went on, I just, I was really almost overwhelmed by all the different designs you could get, but I just thought I'd keep it simple. And I actually, this was the text that was advertised. I just liked it, so I kept it. Um, they are a bit more expensive. I think they're about 20 pounds and, um, but I've got a code which you can get 10 pounds off. It's not an affiliate. It's not an, an, a sponsored post, but there was a referral code. So I sent it to my daughter as well and she got 10, 10 pounds off. So I will link that below if you're interested. Um, so that's that. And then the other thing I bought to keep myself organised is this. It is, I really love this actually. I guess it's just sort of plasticky, but it's a little wallet. I've got something in there. Of 12 dividers, 12 small Ziploc dividers there. And what I'm going to use this for is my accounts. So most of the things I buy for my business, I buy online, but every now and then I will have an actual physical receipt. Maybe it's some, um, you know, toner cartridge, that sort of thing, paper. Um, so I'm going to be able to put receipts in there. I can label them. It does come with, um, it did come with a set of labels actually. Let me just pop them in here. So it also came with a sheet of sticker labels um, that you can just stick on to each envelope. Um, but I'm going to use my my label maker, I think, just to make some nice little labels. So I thought that was really useful because it's really small. It's got some, I mean, there are some pockets. You could put some, um, you know, business cards, whatever in there, I suppose. Um, but I just thought that was really useful. I can just keep that in my bag if I'm out and about and I buy anything. I can keep it in there and then come the end of the month when it's tax time. I've got all my receipts in one place and they're already organised. So um, that was, I think that was about £10 from Amazon. I'll put the link to that below as well. So those are the things I bought to keep me on track this year. We'll see how that goes. I think um, anything goes at the moment, doesn't it? So I'm not going to make, um, I'm not going to make any grand plans or promises to myself. Um, and then lastly, I'll just share with you the books and TV that I've been enjoying. So um, the first book is Mrs. Milburn's Diaries. This is an Englishwoman's day-to-day -day reflections, 1939 to 1945. Um, just a normal lady. Um, it says, um, Clara Emily Milburn was a woman of her time and class. Like most people, she was saddened by the destruction and the utility of war and all the suffering it entailed. I think a family member of hers, they, they she kept her journals from the, during the war times and um, they got handed down through the family and eventually they, um, the, they got published. Anyway, I'm not, oh, oh I'm quite far in actually. Um, but I just, I do love reading people's diaries, not, <laughs> that sounds so bad. <laughs> I, I do like reading diaries though, I just think they give a lovely insight. Um, I of course do not go sneaking around the house searching for diaries, but um, published diaries 
are fair game. I just think they give a lovely insight into, you know, normal people, normal people's lives and the way they, they think and they felt. And to me, that's really fascinating. So um, I've read a few, um, a few diaries like this. And um, yeah, I just I just find it really interesting. So I'm reading that as a one I fancy, just because it was on. It's a secondhand book. I, I mean, I I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know where to recommend you look for it. To be honest, you maybe eBay because me and my um, daughter found it in a charity shop. It was um, actually uh, Kyra handed it to me. She said, "Oh, mum," and I you know I knew straight away that I would read it so maybe eBay I don't know if you like that sort of thing and then the other book that I'm reading which I'm really really enjoying is called Small Pleasures and this one's by Claire Chambers um I don't know anything else she's written but it I love it I love it so much it is about um uh, it's set in 1957 and it's about a, a lady journalist who um, writes a small column for a paper and there in, in, in the paper is um, an article from some sort of uh, scientists talking about how soon you wouldn't need men to make babies. And a lady had rushed in in response and saying, said, um, well, I know that to be true because I gave birth to a daughter and um, I was a virgin. And so the paper pick up this story and they send this lady a reporter to go and investigate. And the, um, the lady and her daughter agree to have tests. And it turns out that she was for three months in... Um, some sort of hospice she had rheumatoid arthritis when she was younger so and and it was run by nuns and they were spread they were never on their own so it sort of becomes plausible and she didn't realize she was pregnant until you know she got out and and the time of conception must have happened during this time in a hospital in in hospital um so they're sort of investigating and all the time the um, journalist is getting closer to the family and they're bonding so um, it's re it's really unusual story. I really really am enjoying it. So I highly recommend it. I mean I can't say how whether I'm going to like the ending, but I'm about a third of the way through and I'm loving it so far. So I definitely I um, definitely recommend that if you're looking for um, a new a new read. And that is everything. Um, TV wise, we just adored Bridgerton. Uh, let me know if you watched it and loved it as much as we do or if you didn't um yeah we inhaled that tv show that's on netflix um a period drama quite steamy in um some places um but and um, and what i really like about it is it's this costume drama the costumes are beautiful obviously a lot of it is set in bath which is just up the road from us and um the music so it has this um orchestrated soundtrack and it's all modern songs and I was watching it with my eldest and she was going I didn't pay much attention because you know there were lots of balls and things and I didn't pay much attention to it and, and she was listening she was going I, I just recognize that song and I was thinking don't be silly that's like old music <laughs> and it was like uh, I can't remember who she said it was by it was um Oh gosh, what's her name? Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, so it's basically modern pop songs orchestrated. So it's got a beautiful soundtrack. And I just think it brings it up a level, you know, and um, I love the cast. And obviously, I love how diverse the cast was and um, the show in general. Um, yeah, I really, really loved it. And then Rob and I have just finished watching The Serpent, which is um, on BBC, I think it's on BBC iPlayer now, I'm assuming it's it's been out, but you can get, watch all the episodes on iPlayer and it's got um, Jenna Coleman in and I can't remember the chap's name, but he plays, um, it's basically about a serial killer in the 70s um, who sort of, um, I guess, followed the hippie trail through Thailand and, and Nepal and sort of basically murdering tourists taking on their identities and um, sort of traveling on their passport just terrible terrible bloke complete psychopath um what's his name charles i think 
it's Sajan, Sabran, let me have a look, yeah, Charles Sabraj. Um, anyway, it's all set in the 70s, the, the 70s fashions are just beautiful, I mean, I just couldn't stop looking at Jenna Coleman at every episode, they're just gorgeous, but the story is also really good, it's, um, I think they did a really, really good production actually, it's sort of the sort of thing you'd find on Netflix, so, um, I really recommend that as well. I think there's about eight episodes of that. Um, but Rob also really enjoyed that. So, yes, I would definitely recommend both those um, if you haven't already seen them. I'm sure lots of you already have. Um, and I think that's about it for me, actually. So, hope you're all doing well. Um, I did take on board your comments, actually, and I have been filming some vlog footage. So I thought maybe I would do like a January vlog, a February vlog, maybe one a month or one a fortnight, depending on how much, um, you know, I get to film. Because obviously we're not really up to much, are we? But um, I definitely will be doing some more vlogs. So um, hopefully there'll be one of those up soon. Um, so anyway, take care and I will see you all in a couple of weeks. Bye bye.